Hello and welcome to this video of the course Answers at Solving in Practice. I am Javier Romero and here we are going to do the exercise on conflict-driven no good learning for answers at solving of the solving part of the course. And this is a very interesting exercise because you will put in practice what you have learned in the solving part, but this builds upon some notions that you have already learned from previous lessons. So I think this makes the exercise quite interesting. And on the other hand, it will make the exercise rather long. But I know you are watching the video. So what I will do, I go slowly doing a step by step and I count on you to scroll forward once you find that you understand everything well or if I'm going too slowly or whatever. But I think it's good for you that you have every single step here well described. Okay, something that I also have to say is that for this exercise, there may be different solutions because you may decide to propagate on that the order of the propagation that you uh, follow in this no good propagation procedure is not determined. So you can decide to propagate first on one literal and then on another. And depending on this order, we may end up with a different conflict no good here and then with a different assignment there. So this means there may be different solutions and all of them are correct because there may be different ways to execute this procedure. Now what I do is in this exercise sheets, you have one solution and here I will uh, uh, go through other path so that you at least have two solutions for the exercise. And what else did I want to say? I think nothing else at this point. So let's simply go quickly to the slides to see what is relevant for this exercise. And just to say, this is on the section on conflict driven, no good learning of the solving part. And you have to read this part of the slides on no good propagation and conflict analysis. And of course, watch the videos by Torsten where he explains all this very well. Okay, then let's go to the exercise. We are given a logic program P and then an assignment that is represented in this annotated table where we have the decision levels, the decision literals at its level, then the literals that are propagated and the no goods that are used to propagate. Then our first task is to apply this procedure, no good propagation, until we find a conflict no good. So we will be here propagating and here we will be writing the no goods that we use for propagation until we reach a conflict no good. And then we will derive another conflict no good using the first UIP method. And we will use that to find the assignment of the algorithm after this conflict analysis. We will do some back jumping and then we will propagate a bit more. Good. Now, before we start really with this propagation here, let's do two things that are handy. The first one is to check whether there's anybody that occurs in two rules. And if you look at the program, this is never the case. All the bodies are different. Then another thing that we want to do is to look for the relevant loop no goods. But before we go to that, I'll tell you how we will do the exercise. So normally what we would do is we get this program and then we build the completion no goods and on the other side, the relevant loop no goods. But, and then we propagate using those, all those no goods. But to make things easier for that, or to make things faster for us, we don't build the completion no goods of the program P, but we work directly with the logic program because we are enough clever to do that. And, uh, and uh, yes, this is how we are, are going to do it. And you will see this is not difficult. And, uh, but still, we need to get the, the, the relevant loop no goods big. And this is feasible because there will not be that many. So for that, we have to write here the positive atom dependency graph. And we have from this rule, we have an edge from B to A and from C to A. So we can have here that we go from B to A and from C to A. 
And then we have another from E and F to A. Oops, we can have here from E and from F to A. And then there's another from C to B. And then what else do we have here? Nothing on this line. And then here from F to E. And then D to F and E to F. D to F and E to F. So now it's clear that we only have this loop here, EF. Then for EF, E and F, we have these three rules, and these two contains E and F. So this is the external support for the loop EF, and the D is the unique external body for that loop. Okay, so then we can just write here the corresponding loop no good that says it cannot be the case that f is true and that the external bodies are false in this case, that the, the body with d is false. And we have the same thing for the e. Right? Good. So then we know that all the bodies are, are different and that these are the two only uh, relevant loop nodes. Let me erase this here. And we can start with propagation. And the first thing we are going to do is just to mark already the in the program the literals that we have assigned. So we have here first that the body BC is false. We mark it like this, saying that this is false. We have next that a is false, and then A is false here, this literal is true, A is false here, and that's it for the A. And next we have that given that A is false, we can derive that EF is also false, and we mark it like that. And then at this point in decision level 3, we make the decision to make D falls. Now with D falls, let's see what happens. D appears there and it's false, and it appears there and it's false, and D does not appear anywhere else, just in these two places. Good, then let's see what can we derive from that. First thing, if D is false, then the body that only contains D is false. And the no good that we use for this is this one, that it cannot be the case that the body is true, but D is false. And then from this part, what we can derive is that if the head of the rule is false, then the body must be false. So hence we have here that it has to be false this body with not D, sorry, not B, not C. And this can be obtained with the no good, with this no good. It cannot be the case that the body is true and the head is false. Good, then we can mark here, nothing else can be, we cannot derive anything else from this, from setting C to true, so we can continue and see what can we derive now from the fact that the body with D is false. And now, with the, if the body of D is false, we can derive that D is false, but this we already have, and we could derive that f is false. No, because still the body we see can be true. So we cannot derive this directly at this point. Nothing else can be done. Then about the fact that the body of D is false. Now let's see with the body not B, not C. So this is false. Then we know that D has to be false because this is the unique rule for D. But again, this we already we have it here, so there's nothing to that we can add about it. And now we know that one of these two literals has to be false, so either B or C is true, but we don't know which, so you cannot propagate on that. 
Hence, it seems that we should stop here and now start a new level and make some decision here, right? But wait, what we have been doing here is only caring about the completion no goods that we obtain from the program. But if we look now here at the relevant loop no goods, we see that we can use them for propagation. Right? Because this we have derived that the body with the is false, and we have these two no goods. So we can propagate either with the first one or with the second one. We can propagate that either. F has to be false or E has to be false. And if we go to the program to understand why is the case, this should be clear. If the, if this body is false, then we cannot derive, no longer derive E or F because these two rules depend on each other. Right? Here we have this loop with E and F. So both of them have to be false after given the current assignment. Then here we can choose to propagate with, with any of them. And what we will do is the following. Given that in the solutions that appear in this exercise sheet, we use there this no good with true E, I'm going to follow the other way and use this other no good. Both are possible. I just will go, we'll use this here so that in this way you have two different solutions. Then we derive that f is false using this loop no good that tells us that it cannot be the case that f is true if the body with d is false. Let me mark this here. And now we go up to the program to mark that this f is false. Then here it became false. Also here. Also here. Now this literal becomes true. And this becomes false. I think now I have marked all the Fs. Yes, so let's see what can we now propagate with this. So from here, if this atom F is false, the whole body is false. We have that it's false. F not B, and for this we use the no good that tells us it cannot be the case that F not B is true and that F is false. Now let's see, starting from here, we have the right that F is false, then EF, the body must be false, but this we already had it here, and I can see it because I have the, the I have crossed it here, right? Good, then for the next one here, the given that f is false, this body is true, and I should propagate on that, that it's true, the body with not f, and this is because we have the no good that says it cannot be the case that the body not f is false, and f is false. Then here, we, given that f is false, we can derive that this body with d is also false, but just looking at this mark here, we know that we already have it, and if you are unsure about it, then you can just go and check it here. And then the last f is here, and then we know that this body should also be false. So the body with d is false, because it cannot be the case that the body is true, and that f is false, and f is false, you see we have it here, so we derive all this. Nice, then I think we are fine with f, f, with false f, and let's continue now with uh, this literal that says that the body with f and not b is not, is false. Okay, this is the body, we mark it, and since the bodies, we know that each body occurs only on a rule body, we don't have to look at the other's rule at all, because the body F not B only appears there. And uh, what can we derive? So first thing, uh, we, we, we know that the F is false, so 
it doesn't matter, no matter the value of B, the, the body will be false, so we cannot derive anything about B. But we can derive something about E, right? Because if the body has become false, and this is the unique rule for E, then E will become false. So we can derive that E is false, because it cannot be the case that this is true, but its unique body, so to say, is false. And I think this is all we can do now with this body to derive that E is false. Then we can move on to see what can we propagate with this one, with the fact that the body not F is true. So let's go here. If not F is true, let's mark it. Then we don't have anything else to mark because the body only occurs in this rule. And then we can derive that C is true. Because it cannot be the case that C is false and the body is true. And this is all we had to do about this body with not F. Now to continue, I have unzoomed a bit so that everything fits here. And it's the time to see what happens with this body with E being false. This is false. Hence, we can derive that the E is false. But look, we already have it here that the E is false. Hence, there's nothing that, that we should um, propagate now. And how have we derived it? Well, because the, we used the fact that the body with F and not B was false to derive that E had to be also false. Then we are done with this and we can continue seeing what can we derive now that we know that E is false. So let's start marking it here. E is false there and let's see here it becomes false. Then here we have to cross it. Then here we cross it also. And here the literal is true, and I think this was it for marking. Now let's see what can we propagate. Here we have made this true. This was true already from before because A was false from there, hence now this body becomes true. We have that true, not A, not E becomes true, and we can derive this from the no good that tells us that it cannot be the case that the body is false if A is false and E is false. Good, let's continue now. Given that the E is false, this body is false, but this we already have it here. In fact, it's what we used to derive that E was false. Now the E is false here, we could derive that the body EF is false, but we have already derived it and we see it because we have the mark there and it appears there in the assignment. Now, what else? Then this becomes true. So we don't know the value of C, so we cannot make any inference about this, this body. And then here, given that the E is false, we know that the body is false, but this, we already have it here. Hence, I think we can stop with the false E and see what can we propagate now that we know that C is true. First, let's mark C is true, C is true, C is true, C is true, and this literal doesn't hold. So basically, just here we have this, cross it, mark it, and here all these are true. Now let's see whether we can propagate something. From here, we see that the rule body is false because we have it marked, but this is true, hence B has to be false. We have that B has to be false because it cannot be the case that B is true, that C is true, and that the body BC is false. See, we have this body BC already from here. And we have this TC from there, so we derive that B has to be false. Now, here C is true, we could derive that the body not A, not E, 
is true and we already have it here so it, there's no point in adding it again now here we also have that c is true so we could derive that the body not f is true but we already have it we have here the tick and in fact it appears there what else here this is true hence this body becomes true the body with with c and not e it's true with c and not e and this is using the notebook that c not e can be false if c is true and e is false and the c is there and the e is there hence we derive that the body must be true and then here we had that this literal becomes false and then the body becomes false but we already have it that not b not c is false and it appears there yes and then that's it for c being true now let's see for the body not a not e being true this appears here and we already have that the literals in the body are true and that the head is true so we no longer have to we don't have to do anything about this literal and we can move on to this false b and let's see what happens with it then with the b we mark it here also here and these two are satisfied so let's do this we cross cross good and good then let's see whether we can propagate anything here given that this is false the body is false but we already have it here this literal is true but given that this was false the rule also becomes the rule body also is false and we already have this in our assignment and um, then let's see here given that this head is false then this body must be false so then we can add this but actually when we come here to add that the body c not e must be false we see that we already have that this was true hence this means that we have found a conflict because so let's let's go a second back what i was going to do is to add this here because there is the no good that says that it cannot be the case that the body c not e is true and b is false right but actually we cannot add this to our assignment because we have its complement so actually what happens is that this is a conflict no good because we already have derived that this body was true and that b was false right so then this means that at this point we have found this conflict no good with unit propagation then this is the solution to the part A, this no good. And then once this is done, we can continue with the part B on deriving the conflict no good with the first UIP method starting from this no good, from this conflict no good that we have obtained. Our conflict no good has these two sign literals that belong to this latest decision level three. Hence, we will underline them and we will highlight the no goods that we will have to use for resol resolution. Then we start resolving these two, and these two literals will go away, and we will have just those three. B is false c is true and e is false b false is from this decision level and also these two are from this decision level hence we mark them and we highlight the corresponding nodes now we have to resolve these two we will get rid of the b's and then we will have that c is true e is false and that the body bc is false and you see tc appears in both no good but we only have to write it once because a no good is a set of signed literals
And these two we know are from this level because we already had them marked here. And this BC comes from the top, from the decision level one. Hence, we don't mark it. And now we resolve with these two. We are, we get rid of the TCs and we have those three signed literals then in our new conflict node. And this true of not F comes from this decision level, hence we underline it, underline it and we highlight the no code. Now we still have two decision, two literals from this decision level, then we have to continue resolving. We resolve this one. These two will go away and we are left with those three signed literals. The body BC is false, the body not F is true, and the body F not B is false. This we know that it's from this decision level, and this we have to go and check. Yes, this is from this decision level because it appears there, hence we mark it, and we can highlight the corresponding node. Still, we have two literals from this decision led. Well, then we continue resolving. Now it's with this one. And these two will disappear. And then we will be left with those three signed literals. And this F, F, okay, let me underline this here that we had already before. And this F, F comes from this decision level also, hence we underline it and I highlight the no good. And still we have, oops, we have two literals from this decision level, then we can have to continue resolving. And then these two will go away. Oops, let me do it again. These two will go away. And given that FF appears in both, we will just keep it. So keep it once or write it once. Hence, we will have just the no goods with two decision, sorry, with two sign literals, F, B, C, and F false. And in this case, this is the unique literal of this decision level, right? Because this comes from decision level one. Hence, this is our solution to part B. This is the conflict node that we derive with the first UIP method. And this concludes part B. Later, I will do it with another method. But now, let's go and do part C. And this is very simple. So we have to back jump to the decision level where this no good becomes unit and to the highest decision level where this no good becomes unit. And for this to become unit, this body BC has to be false. And then this is already the case at decision level one. So we can jump here to the top to decision level one. And we will derive that F has to be true because if it's false, it would violate this no good. And now just let's do it here. Maybe this is not the cleanest thing, but I think this is enough for us here. This part does not appear here anymore. And we add that F becomes true using this no good that tells us that it cannot be the case that F is false and the body BC is also false. And then this concludes the part C of the exercise, and we are finished with it. Now, before I finish this video, I will do the part B with the other method, which is a bit more graphical. And we have here these two literals, and that they occur in this part of our assignment. Then we have to trace where do they come from. So 
This one uses TC and FE, then we can write here this arrow and this other arrow. So this means that to obtain this sign literal, we have used these two that we must have derived before. Now for BB, BB in false, we have used TC because we need another arrow here. And we have used this from a previous level. Hence, we will underline it here with green. Now let's do the same for this TC and FE. So for TC, we have used the fact that not F is true. Then let's write here. Oops, I want to do it with red. Like this. And for E being false, we have used this one. And this goes like that. Now, for to derive this one, we have used the fact that F is false. Then we need an arrow like this. And to derive this that this body is false, we have also used that F is false. Now to derive that F is false, we have used the fact that this body D is false. And to derive that this body D is false, we have used that the atom D is false. Nice. Then we have here this implication graph that we built starting from the literals that appear in our conflict node going all to the top. And this is a partial implication graph because we are, have not written the, the, the part of the graph for the literals, for the literals that are not uh, relevant for our conflict node. No? So for example, we don't, haven't written this uh, edge here, but it doesn't matter for what we want, because what we want is to find a unique implication point that is a point in this graph from which we can imply the two literals of our no good. And the earliest one is this F, this uh, F fault here, because from here we can derive all the intermediate literals that we need in the end to generate these two that belong to the conflict, um, to the conflict no good. So this is the first unique implication point. For example, this one, that the body of these faults is also a unique implication point because from this, we can derive all the no goods that are needed, sorry, all the literals that are needed to imply these two. And similarly, this is also a um, unique implication point, but this false D is the first unique implication point. And now it's very simple to, to, to write this conflict no good that we derive, because this is just to say, okay, FF is the unique implication point, the first unique implication point, hence it goes in the no good. And then we just have to add all the literals of the of the of the no goods that we have used to derive all the literals here in the uh, necessary for these two and this is only this bcb in false sorry what i wanted to say is we have to collect the literals that we have used in these no goods that we have highlighted and that do not belong to this decision level and this is only this bc false and actually we can check that this is the same result that we obtained before and you can use this method or the other and you can also use both just that just to check that you obtain the same result and then with the same result the of course the exercise c there's no difference with respect to that Okay, then uh, this is what I wanted to do and to tell you about this exercise. I hope you enjoyed it, you understood it, and I will see you in another video. Ciao!